Okay, well, listeners, let's learn sumo. I'm Clayton. Welcome to the podcast. Well, I am back in Australia. Hope you can join me for the rest of 2024 uh, in the sumo field. Uh, just returned this morning. If you are uh, in North America or Europe, uh, one thing you'll find if you ever travel to Australia, if you ever had the time, is that you do need a bit of time. It is quite the distance from everywhere and most of the flights that come into Australia turn up at very early in the morning, so it's always a red-eye flight into this country. Uh, it was a good month over bo- overseas in uh, Vietnam and Thailand. Uh, I encourage you to visit Vietnam. had a great time there. Okay, so let's get on to day two of the uh, Hatsubasho in Tokyo at the Kokukikan in Tokyo. Great stadium, holds about, uh, I think from memory, somewhere between twelve and 15,000 people. Uh, day two and three have just finished. We've just finished day three. Well, day two, that was a pretty good day. Uh, the big news out of uh, day two was Wakamoto Haru, our Magashira, uh, Magashira two, sorry, Magashira one demotee taking on Yokozuna Terano Fuji and beating him, getting a Kinboshi, a gold star win. I'll talk about that a little bit later. First, let's go through some of the lower ranks. We didn't really touch on them on day one. Uh, short uh, turnout for day one when I was uh, in Bali, I think. Uh, Aoyama, he is back up into Makuchi from his little stint in Jurio. But uh, to be honest, uh, there's not a lot of go forward there going on. Mostly arms and he got pulled out, sidestepped by Takara Fuji. Uh, Shimazumi gave uh, Bishozan a really good push out. Uh, Shimazumi on day two, that gets him to 2-0. and o. Onosato gave Koto Shoho a decent Yorikiri. Tomokaze, he went down Oshidashi in a thrusting battle to Onosho. Uh, Takanosho lost advantage in a bit of a false start, but Endo took advantage for a quick Yorikiri, caught him off balance after that uh, Tachi Eye. He just wasn't quite there. Churunumi. He beat Miyagiru. Uh, Miyagiru was probably a bit unlucky. He lost balance in thrusting and got slightly diagonal. Churunumi, he took advantage for a rear push-out Okuridashi. Uh, Tamawashi, he deposited Oho into the crowd with a power thrust Oshidashi. Uh, Surugishio, he flung Sadanumi into the crowd with a fairly contemptuous throw, it had to be said. But then he waited to see that Sadanumi was okay uh, and was getting back up before he returned to his position on the dohyo. Meisei took on uh, Hoka, our big man Hokuseiho, the big leaning tower. Uh, look, he tried the Midori Fuji tactic of a strong inside uh, rear grip and a low front grip to get a... And he obviously got a big lean on from uh, Hokuseiho. And I remember watching this match thinking... You're doing exactly what Midori Fuji did unsuccessfully. Uh, Meisei does have a little bit more weight. He tried a few moves, but uh, Hokuseiho's weight and height and his reach are just too much for him. It was pretty much almost the same fight as Midori Fuji. It was just obviously a very much long, shorter match. Uh, Midori Fuji, Hokuseiho uh, fight in November turning out at over 6 minutes 40 seconds. This one was uh, nowhere close to that. Same outcome, Hokuseiho won uh, Watanage. Uh, really should be a lazy, leaning Watanage Kimarite, to be honest. Um, uh, we'll talk about Hokuseiho in day three shortly. Hiradumi uh, on day two, full intent, pushes Mitakayumi Oshidashi, pretty dominant thrust from the Tachi Ai. He meant it. Uh, he seems very motivated uh, in the Hatsu Basho so far. It's not often Mitakiyumi is overpowered, and uh, it, it's clear that Hiradumi has been working out. His shoulders are much bigger. Asanayama, our former Ozeki, he overpowered a very disappointed Kinbozan. Asanayama got a two-handed grip eventually and walked him out. It was a pretty powerful performance, getting Asanayama to 2 and O. Oh. Shonanumi, he got a uh, Hikiyatoshi thrust down on Ichiya Momoto. Ichiya Momoto doesn't really seem to have a lot of go forward at the moment. It's all arms and legs, but nothing really powerful coming from it. Uh, disappointed at 0-2 for Ichiya Momoto. Tobizaru, 
He caught Nishkigi out being a bit too committed. A very strong tachi eye. He stepped back for a Tsukitoshi push down as Nishkigi face planted the dojo. Shodai, he got a good left body grip on uh, Ryudan and uh, Sukiyanage somewhat painfully over the edge of the dojo for uh, Ryudan. I think kind of land on the edge there a little bit. Uh, but I did, did see him tonight and he was uh, moving about. Uh, Ura. Now, we spoke about Ura on day one and about his uh, Greco-Roman roots um, and that their very low stance when they do that. He's also got a bit of a judo background as well. He does get a bit... He was early in his career criticised for his judo uh, undertakings. And Hokuto Fuji, he used it against him for a Takikomi thrust down and Ura did a, obviously a double-twisting flip land a moment before Hokuto Fuji as he delayed his steps off the bales backwards. Uh, Ura, I think, was just a bit too low, a bit too overcommitted and he could learn something from Hokuto Fuji in the way that Hokuto Fuji delayed his step backwards uh, as Ura went down uh, to prevent himself going Shinatai or dead body. Shin Kobasubi, he met uh, the top ranked Rashiki on the first day, so he, and that would have been, uh, that was, uh, I should say, Terana Fuji, uh, the uh, Yokozuna, and that's the way it works for Shin Kobasubi. They meet the top uh, Rashiki ranks on day one and then work their way down through the top ranks in the first week. It is Komasubi and Megashira 1 and 2 are really known as the meat grinder positions. Uh, they really face all the big wrestlers first up. They know it. It is character building or character destroying. Some wrestlers get to Komasubi, uh, but they never return, let alone get to Sanyaku promotion. Uh, so, you know, Ura and Takeyasu. Uh, Takeyasu, I think, has been in this position before, but Ura is a Shinsen uh, Komasubi. He obviously gets the uh, top level for the first week. Uh, Kotonawaka and Gonoyama. Kotonawaka won by Watanaga in November and Gonoyama at uh, Magashira 3 now. Uh, Gonoyama tried hard at the touch eye to get an advantage and he pushed Koto, uh, Kotonawaka back. Uh, Kotonawaka recovered by getting Gonoyama's left arm and a left rear grip crucially, which set him up for Gonoyama's next push, resulting in a great lever for Kotonawaka to throw Gonoyama into the crowd with an Watanage belt throw. It was pure power. 2-0 and o for Kotonawaka on day two. Daesho and Abi. Abi tried hard for a, uh, a Sapari battle. Um, Daesho just mm, kind of got him in the end. Uh, look, Abi went a little bit uh, diagonal, missed one thrust, and that gave Daesho the... Uh, uh, the ability to thrust back, push him out, Oshidashi. If you're going to thrust uh, and get into a thrusting Sapari battle with Daesho, you really do need to do it perfectly because Daesho is the uh, exemplar of that technique uh, and uh, he's very effective with it. Kirishima and Takeyasu, our Komasubi versus our o Ozeki. Uh, look, Kirishima, big tachi eye, uh, got a right arm thrust which just put Taka. Uh, Takeyasu, the big bear, off balance. Takeyasu went backwards under pressure and a th second thrusting attack just put Takeyasu out. It was a really big win, big power win by the Yokozuna hopeful Kirishima. What we did find, however, was Takeyasu went to Kyujo or basically not turning up day three because he has an injury, uh, which gave Gonayama a Fusen uh, default win. Uh, it appears that before his match with Kirishima, he'd hurt his lower back in practice, uh, but decided to fight anyway. Uh, here's hoping he can return to defend his Komasubi rank on day four or five and not miss too much of it to hurt his chances of uh, staying at uh, Komasubi. Next up was Takakesho, our Ozeki, versus our hopeful Megashira 1 Atami Fuji, Battle of the heavy, Heavyweights. Both men uh, cresting about the 180 kilogram mark. Big thrusting battle, multiple hits, a big slap on Atami. You may not have, you may not see it, but you've got to watch it closely. Uh, Takakesho, our slap king, he really did get a, a, a bit of a hit on Atami on the left hand, oh, his left hand. Atami Fuji tried to close on Takaya, uh, Takakesho's arm for a throw, but he, he just wasn't fast enough. And uh, Atami Fuji goes backwards over the dojo. Uh, it, it's clear that 
you know, it was a big match and Tucker Keisho, he did look pretty gassed. He looked pretty tired after that. And um, like I've said before, I think Tommy Fuji, he just lacks a little bit of strength. He is only, uh, I think, about 20 or 21 years of age. He's quite a young lad, despite his bulk. I don't think he's quite got the muscle... Uh, in his core strength yet to uh, back up that bulk. So uh, I think that's going to be his limiting factor with some of these bigger, uh, more ranked guys. Hoshoryu versus Midori Fuji. Midori Fuji went for the big inside grip. Hoshoryu, he's got power. He didn't give it up. He knows how to defend, and he drove Midori Fuji out pretty quick, uh, pretty quickly. Uh, that puts Hoshoryu on 2-0 and oh, and Midori Fuji on 0-2, oh and two, not having a great start in that meat grinder position in the joy. Then we get to Teruna Fuji and Wakamoto Haru, our fight of the night. Uh, look, this was a classic fight. Uh, Wakamoto Haru down in the Magashira ranks. He took out the win, and that gets him a Kinboshi win. Now, uh, interestingly, it's a bit of a godsend for Wakamoto Haru to be demoted to Magashira because he gets a Kinboshi gold star for winning against the Yokozuna, and that results in a pay rise and a, a bit of a bonus for Magashira ranks that beat the Yokozuna. That does not apply for the Senyaku ranks. So a bit of a godsend. That'll uh, give his income a bit of a, a, a kick along. Look, it was a really big, long belt grip fight. Uh, it could have gone multiple ways uh, at multiple times. Waka, Waka, try it again. Wakamoto Haru kept the grip, kept the pressure up. It was clear that the Yokozuna's Mawashi got a little bit loose uh, and one of the strands moved up a little bit. That probably disadvantaged Wakamoto Haru as much as it did Terra Fuji because you lose a little bit of that uh, lever. But I think it, it caused Terra Fuji some issues as well. I know the Gyoji, he did look at it. He looked very closely at the rear. Uh, but uh, yeah. in the end, Wakamoto Haru, he kept the grip and under a lot of pressure a few times, he, he kept it up. He showed really good strength and intent and he walked and bodily pushed Terra Fuji out over the, uh, over the edge. If you get a chance to watch only one replay last night, that is the one to watch. Uh, former Yokozuna Hakuho, the great Yokozuna, with I think 45 tournament wins, uh, far and above any other Yokozuna, he praised Wakamoto Haru for his win. He said it was really good sumo. Uh, he was very impressed with it. Uh, won a contest of strength. He was a bit critical of Terra Fuji for not using his mass to go all out and all of his strength, thinking he could win a, a yotsu battle with uh, Wakamoto Haru. And I mean, that is that is Wakamoto Haru's uh, strength, is the uh, inside-out, left-right grip. Uh, look, uh, Hakuho also said he was somewhat concerned about the 15-day stamina of our um, Yokozuna. Look, it won't, an early loss to Terra Fuji is not a bad thing. It's just uh, he needs to make sure he doesn't lose a lot early. Anyway, I have that one down as uh, Fight of the Year contender. Our first match that goes into my list for the Fight of the Year for 2024. Uh, it's a fairly classic one. It was a big upset, and it was a pretty good match in all. Um, they both uh, put in a lot. They were both pretty tired. Uh, they did interview uh, Wakamoto Haru at the end, but he could barely get a word out. He was so tired. Anyway, on to day three after that big day, uh, day two, day three, um, we'll skip some of the lower ranks. Meisei and Hiradumi look really good, strong touchy eye. Hiradumi, uh, you know, again, still looking very motivated. Got Meisei slightly off balance with the right pull, but Meisei turned on the thrusters and powered forward to force uh, Hiradumi out Oshidashi. It was a bit of a surprise the way he turned those thrusters on and moved forward. Uh, I thought Hiradumi had a bit more uh, defence there, but uh, he did not. Mitakiyumi, he bodily forced Hokuseho out from the touchy eye. The good hit, uh, Hokuseho tried to use his body to, to force Mitakiyumi back, but Mitakiyumi prevented him getting a grip, which uh, that, that really good one-arm grip that Hokuseho liked. And then he used his bulk against Hokuseho to push him back. Uh, Hokuseho, he's going to face a lot more disappointment. Uh, like, he's obviously used his bulk and his strength and his reach to get himself to Makuchi, and good on him for doing that. But uh, like I said previously, he is going to need to look to change his and adapt his style to some of these larger guys who can 
A, prevent his grip and B, have the similar bulk to him uh, so he can't just use a leaning match against him. He'll find himself uh, losing a lot more than he wins at this level. He's going to have to step it up. Asaniyama and Shonanumi, easy win for Asaniyama. Got a left inside, denied Shonanumi a chance to change his direction, controlled him back for a Yorikiri push out. That was pretty easy in the end. Kimbozan, he got a pretty easy win over the winless uh, performer from November, Ichi Yamamoto. Again, thrust, no real power, and Kimbozan just pushed him out easily. Uh, Ichi Yamamoto, I, I just think he misses a little bit of leg strength there. He's got fairly skinny looking legs, and there's not a lot of power in them from what I can see. Nishkigi, he got an easy win over Shodai. He overpowered him at the Tachi. It was a pretty big hit and a forearm blast, and forced him back. Uh, Shodai, he just couldn't pivot. That's 2 1 to Nishkigi. Uh, Ryudin. And Tobizaru, look, this was a really good win. It was a pretty good match, this one, by Tobizaru. Some very good tactics. A bit of a chess game in close. Tobizaru stuck his face right in there, denied him an upper grip for a Kotanage by Ryudin. Ryudin, they kind of struggled with the hands for about uh, close to a minute, just... uh, Tobizaru making sure he didn't get the grip and uh, Ryudin trying hard to lift Tobizaru up, but uh, eventually he gave up on that and he Ryudin went for a left grip, but uh, gave up his belt to Tobizaru who went in deep behind, pulled Ryudin around on his hip and that just effectively off-balanced him and eventually got a Yoriki force out as uh, Ryudin just couldn't get his balance back. Uh, didn't go well for him. Really good win by Topizari. That was, uh, for me, probably one of the matches of the day. Goniyama, he got his Fusen default win over the missing Takayasu, who's out injured. Hokuto Fuji and Daesho, these guys know each other, both from the Saitama Prefecture just outside Tokyo, have uh, battled each other since school days. They're pretty good friends. Uh, again, big thrusting attack uh, from a big touchy eye thrust by Daesho. Hokuto Fuji, to his, uh, to his credit, he absorbed it and he returned with a, uh, a few thrusts of his own, a right hand right under Daesho's armpit. And fa- it's a really strange lift. Uh, Daesho literally came off the ground, forced him back f- to the bales, Daesho just couldn't. Uh, Daesho could not recover his momentum, and Hokuto Fuji got an Oshi Dashi open push out. Um, it was a really unusual one. I watched a few of those replays, and uh, it appears that Hokuto Fuji got his uh, right hand right up under uh, the armpit. I couldn't quite see the other side to to what Hokuto Fuji was doing, but that uh, whatever he did on that left side, it certainly got Daesho off the ground, and uh, that just. Uh, Chose the match winner there. Kotanawaka against the winless Midori Fuji. Midori Fuji went for an under-shoulder grip and he, he denied Kotanawaka a belt grip. But as they tussled, Midori Fuji got hold of uh, Kotonowaka's arm and tried to pull him as low as possible. Now, I just think uh, Kotonowaka had an underarm grip as well. And uh, Midori Fuji just committed himself really hard to that low pull down. Uh, unfortunately, his favourite uh, Kimarite, the Katasakashi, uh, well, Kotonowaka tried that on Midori Fuji and made it work. An under shoulder pull down. 0 and 3 for Midori Fuji. He goes winless into day three, uh, into day four, sorry, and 3 and 0 for Kotonowaka. His Chances of Ozeki promotion. He's looking for 13 wins. That is on track. And he's looking well. He's, he's got good reaction uh, after that second thrust. He's sped up a little bit, which is good to see. Ashoryu versus Ura, our acrobat. Uh, Ura uh, got a really good rear grip and almost pulled down, pulled off one of those rear pull-down sort of leg trip uh, Kimarites, but uh, just didn't work. Somehow Hishoryu used his strength, uh, prevented it, and then his arms, it was a really unusual, awkward move, used his arms to pull Ura across his thigh and fling him across his body down to the uh, doho. Ura looked stunned. Uh, it was quite the strength move from Hishoryu and uh, a Sukiyanage beltless arm throw, they called it. I don't know that it quite met that, but uh, that's pretty much what they called it. it uh, I've watched a few replays and I'm, I'm just a bit baffled as to how that happened, other than just really good strength by Hoshoryu. Uh, Ura, I think he's still watching replays to see what happened himself. He's uh, a few steps behind there. 
Kirishima wins over Atami Fuji. Not a great uh, touchy eye by Kirishima. He retreated, uh, got pushed back to the bales, but he got a pretty good lateral move as Atami Fuji just couldn't get a decent grip on Kirishima's belt. Uh, Kirishima drove in for a right belt grip, which allowed him to pull Atami Fuji around his hip, again unbalancing him. Uh, got a good double grip, and Yorikiri look a little bit awkward to begin with, but a, a pretty good win in the end. Kirishima, 3-0. and He's still on track for his Yokozuna promotion for the Basho. Wakamoto Haru, after his big win last night. You could forgive him for being a little bit gassed today, a little bit tired. He's faced Ozeki Takakesho. Takakesho, the battle hamster, likes a big hit, likes to uh, throw out the thrusts and the slaps to uh, use his bulk against his uh, people. But Wakamata Haru, the last time he beat uh, Takakesho was May last year or something. Anyway, look, uh, big touchy eye. Uh, t- Bakamoto Haru absorbed it. He got forced back to the bales, but he returned with some pretty strong thrusting. Sapari forced Takakesho back, and he got a really good final thrust for a Suki Adashi open thrust out against the Ozeki. Uh, Wakamoto Haru, he looks on fire. He looks much more motivated this tournament. He obviously being demoted to Megashira. He's a bit upset with that. It's his first uh, uh, Makekoshi uh, in his time in Megashira ranks, I believe, in Makuchi. So that was a really good match too. Uh, worth watching that one. Uh, Abi versus Terunofuji. The Yokozuna up against Arby. Arby got a really good double thrust at the touchy eye, but he was a bit too committed as Terra Fuji pulled him past. Arby spun around. He looked done for all money as he was facing away from the Yokozuna on the, on the bales, but he somehow spun, recovered, went lateral. Uh, Terra Fuji chased him across the dojo. Uh, Arby tried another attack from the bales uh, under pressure. And then as he went forward, Terra Fuji got an arm grip and pulled him over. Uh, it was an overcommitted Arby going down on his legs uh, for a Totari arm pull. Look, it was untidy. It was a bit scrappy, I suppose, by Terra Fuji as he couldn't finish him from the good position he had in the first uh, after the first thrust. So uh, I would hope that the uh, Yokozuna could do something better than that in future. Look, he uh, did recover. He got the win up, which he'll be happy about. I don't think he'll be happy about the quality of the win, uh, if anything. So at the end of day three, that leaves uh, the following five people in 3-0 and in the lead position. Kirishima Ozeki, Hoshoryu our Ozeki, Wakamoto Haru in Magashira 1, Asanayama and our debutante in this basho at a Makuchi level, Shimazumi. He's been around for a little while, uh, but this is his first basho in the big league. So uh, 3-0 and against uh, some of his lower opponents. If he keeps that going, like always, like Atami Fuji, like uh, Hakuoho, if he comes up the second week and he's got uh, seven or eight wins up, uh, he'll start facing some of the higher-ranked guys and the pressure will be put on him. Anyway, that's a great day three. Uh, some good matches there. Um, hoping you can join me. We'll try again in a couple of days to do a catch-up. Uh, we'll go through a few more things. We might uh, add a little bit of trivia on uh, the next one to uh, bring everyone up to date on a few other little bits and pieces. And uh, after this basho is finished, we might even start working on some of the kimarite and trying to understand what they are and why they get uh, called different kimarite. Okay. That is the episode for tonight. I hope you can join me next time. Join me on Instagram or Twitter at Let's Learn Sumo. Uh, ask me any questions you like. Uh, I try and post a few uh, unusual videos as they come across. Uh, and uh, I look forward to talking to you next time. Hakio listeners, Let's Learn Sumo. Hakio! Hakio!